Hey everyone, welcome to episode 241, Arrival Fallacy. Welcome to the Harmony in the Home podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Hutchison. I'm a counselor, a life coach, and most importantly, an imperfect mom doing this work right along with you. And my goal on our podcast is to go from chaos to calm, feel less frazzled and have more fun within your four walls to have more harmony in your home. So before I get talking about arrival fallacy, I want to talk to you a little bit about pocket coaching, which I've talked a little bit about last week where you and I can work together through Voxer, Telegram, or WhatsApp, whatever you prefer, where you're going to share with me, you sign up to share with me audio examples of things that are happening, of different pain points that are happening in your house, and then I will be able to voice memo you in response to things to try, give personal antidotes, personal stories, because a lot of times, a lot of the examples that I want to give, I can't really give because Most of the people in my examples don't want to be on the podcast, which I don't blame them. And so as long as you commit to confidentiality with me, I will commit to confidentiality with you and we will work together and I can help you keep that consciousness level going. So if you're interested and want to sign up, email me at coachingkelly at aol.com or on Instagram or Facebook or however, all the things and just write pocket coaching and then we'll get you set up and talk about all the details and then... I will help you stay conscious for longer periods of time. So today we're talking about something called arrival fallacy, which it's a lot like destination addiction, which I haven't covered in many, many, almost years talking about destination addiction. And destination addiction is pretty much the belief that happiness is in another body, another income, another marriage and with another kid, with something else externally or something else that's going to happen in the future. So a rival fallacy really talks about it's somewhere outside of us. It's somewhere in the distance. So I talk a lot on our podcast about how everything is 50-50. I talk so much about at each level of parenting, there are things that are hard and there are things that are awesome. There are things that are hard at different levels of your age and there are things that are easy. So each level of parenting and of just evolving as a human being, there are parts that are awesome and there's parts that are annoying. There's parts that are hard and there's parts that are easy. And there is no better there in another location because I've talked to the people who are making millions and at their goal weight. And guess what? They still have the 50-50 experience. They still have strengths and they still have struggles. It's just different, but it never goes away. And so destination addiction talks about how happiness will be when I graduate, when I get that job, when I get married, when I get engaged, when we have the kid, when we have the second kid, when I get that car, when that relationship works out or when that relationship ends. And so it's always outside of us thinking that happiness is somewhere off in the future. And so we change and mold so many different things because we think that it's the car or the income or the person or the sibling or the brother or the sister or the aunt or the uncle versus accepting the 50 50 of the human experience and not trying to run away from it. Because what happens is we get sold a bag of goods. I was definitely on destination addiction thinking once we have the kids, then it'll be happily ever after and there'll be no negative emotion. So I was on this treadmill of just life trying to get to that point. I was working with a high schooler the other day and he was very upset because he was very stressed out about school. And he said something along the lines of, I can't wait till I get a job because I won't have any more stress. And I was like, oh, 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 young one, because wherever you go, there you are. And wherever you are at, in at 10 years old is how you're going to be at 20, 30, 40. And so if we can teach the kids when they're younger that life is 50-50, teaching them how to manage human emotions, the tricky ones especially, then their life won't feel so exhausting because they're not going to be on this treadmill or expecting happiness to be outside of them. So I had to ask the Googles for the official definition. An arrival fallacy is the false assumption that once you reach a goal, you will experience enduring happiness. Have you ever had the experience of working hard to reach a goal in life only to find out that once you get to the finish line, you're filled with depression and stress rather than happiness? I know that's happened to me. I know when we had our kids, I thought it was going to be happily ever after and there'd be no problems. And then there was problems and I was like, wait a minute, this is not how it's supposed to go. And so my frustration was not accepting the as is and it was trying to push against reality of like, no, wait, this is supposed to be the happily ever after. 
No, wait, I, I, this isn't supposed to be so stressful. So I love this. I read on Facebook and I wish I knew who I read it from because it's so powerful. I know who wrote it, but I don't know who posted it. So if you posted this, thank you. And I'm sorry, I'm not giving you credit. I promise on the stack of Bibles, it's not on purpose. It says, we convince ourselves that life will be better after we get married, have a baby, then another. Then we are frustrated that the kids aren't old enough and that we'll be more content when they are. Isn't that so true? I remember when the kids were little, I was like, if they could just get out of diapers, oh, my life will be so much easier once they're out of diapers. And then they're out of diapers. And it was like, if they could just stop tantruming and just kind of go with the flow a little bit more. And then it just never stopped. Oh, and that now, now it's the um, quote talking. After that, we're frustrated that we have teenagers to deal with. We will certainly be happy when they are out of the out of that stage. We tell ourselves our life will be complete when our partner gets his or her act together, when we get a nicer car or are able to go on a nice holiday, when we retire. Do you see how it's always in the future? And then we get to that spot. And I know you've been there and I know I've been there. We get to that spot or that thing. And then it's not what we thought it would be. We're like, oh, wait, wherever you go, there you are. I'm still here. I still have to deal with my tricky emotions. Oh, oh my. Let me get back on the treadmill. And it says, the truth is there's no better time to be happy than right now. If not now, when? Your life will always be filled with challenges. And I think we talk a lot about that, about the 50-50 experience and how there's parts of our life right now that are amazing and awesome. And there's parts that are annoying and hard and brutal. And Glennon talks about how life is brutal, where it's beautiful and brutal all at once. And I think once we stop expecting it to be happy all the time and are wanting our kids to be happy all the time, then all of a sudden you can lean into the brutal and you can lean into the brutal and lean into the beautiful and like, oh, this is part of the human experience. And then we can normalize it for our kids just as much. It says a quote from Alfred Souza. He said, for a long time, it had been seemed to me that life was about to begin real life. But there was always some obstacle in the way, something to be gotten through first, some unfinished business, time to be served, a debt to be paid. Then life would begin. At last, it dawned on me that these obstacles were my life. Is that not the truth? I think pushing 50, I'm kind of like finally getting that, but it's still an ongoing thing. Like happiness is not outside of me. It's not in another location, another body, another income, another car, another house, another spouse, another kid, another friend another party. It's all hard and it's all beautiful all at the same time. This perspective has helped me to see that there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. This is the quote talking now, not me. So treasure every moment that you have and treasure it more because you shared it with someone special, someone special enough to spend your time. And remember that time waits for no one. So stop waiting until you lose those 10 pounds, until you gain 10 pounds, until you have kids, until your kids leave the house, until you start work, until you retire, until you get married, until you get divorced, until Friday night, until Sunday morning, until your new car or home, until your car or home is paid off, until spring, until summer, until winter, until your song comes on, until you've, we've, you've had a drink. There is no better time than right now to be happy. Happiness is a journey, not a destination. Work like you don't need money. Love like you've never been hurt and dance like no one's watching. Oh, oh, it says copyright Crystal Boyd artwork by Sarah Trenner. I did not see the artwork. It's from Wild Woman Sisterhood. I guess that's a book. I probably should know the source, but I'm not turning this in for a college essay. So just forgive me. And just I love that part when they gave all the examples, because I know we live for examples. I know I do. And I know you I hear that so much from you about I'm going to say it again. Stop waiting until you lose 10 pounds, until you gain 10 pounds, until you have kids, until your kids leave the house, until you start work, until you retire, until you get married, until you get divorced, until Friday night, until Sunday morning, until you get a new car or a home, until your car or home is paid off, until spring, until summer, until winter, until your song comes on, until you've had a drink. There is no better time than right now to be happy. Happiness is a journey, not a destination. Just like we talk about parenting and just like we talk about conscious parenting. It is a journey, not a destination. Waking up every day with consciousness is hard, but it's worth it. And that's why I think pocket coaching will help you to create that consciousness. And there is no wagon to fall off, but it just helps you to stay conscious longer because you have that accountability piece. So don't get caught up in destination addiction or arrival fallacy. We all do to some extent. It's all in a continuum. But once you realize to accept the as is of right now, the harmony will fall back in your home so much lighter and so much fluffier. I love you guys and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Hey mamas, thanks for listening. If you had any ahas, clicks, or those lightning bolt moments while listening, 
you have to check out my free parenting bootcamp where we take all of this to the next level and we try to create even more awakenings for ourselves so that we can connect more with our kids and never yell at them again. You can sign up at www.coachingkelly.com. And if you really want to fill up my love cup, send me an email of what your aha was, what your click was, what was that lightning bolt moment while you were listening. I want nothing more in life than for you to have harmony in your home and to learn how to be an imperfect mom like me, which allows your kids to be imperfect too, each and every day. Thanks for listening.